In this video, we're going to look at something called composition of transformations. Now, composition of transformations is nothing more fancy or sophisticated than simply performing two or more transformations on the same figure in the same question. We do have a little symbol that's used to represent the word uh, uh, composition. And the symbol that's used to represent the word composition is this open circle symbol that means the word following. So when we see this, we say a reflection in the x-axis following a reflection in the line whose equation is y equals x. Because of the nature of that word following, that brings a unique and interesting twist to our composition. Because it means the word following, that means that we actually perform the reflection in the line y equals x first and the reflection in the x-axis second. So in other words, we have to start with what's on the right side and end with what's on the left side. That's a little bit counterintuitive because we actually read from left to right. However, when we're performing a composition of transformations, we're actually going to work our way from right to left. So again, the reflection in the line y equals x gets done first, whereas the reflection in the x-axis is done last. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in and look at some examples here. In number one, it says find the image of triangle ABC with the following coordinates after a reflection in the x-axis following a translation that moves everybody three units to the left, or sorry, three units to the right and four units up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go get a visual of what this triangle looks like that I'm trying to perform this composition on. So I'm going to go ahead and graph triangle ABC. Notice that when I graph, I'm going to label each point carefully. You should also. So here's my triangle ABC. Remember, I want to start or begin by performing that translation that moves everybody three units in the x direction and four units in the y direction. Or in other words, three units to the right and four units up. And because at this point I've only performed part of the composition, Instead of drawing solid lines, I'm going to draw little dotted lines to indicate that this is what I'm going to call my ghost triangle. It's kind of my image that's in between, but not totally where I want to be yet. Because I still have to now go ahead and perform the reflection over the x-axis. So I'm going to take all these ghost points here and now reflect them over the x-axis, labeling them carefully. And now that I've finished with the composition, I'm going to go ahead and use solid segments to connect my vertices for my triangle. So my final answer is the triangle down here in the fourth quadrant in green. That ghost triangle is just kind of my work that I'm showing in order to obtain the final product. Now if I wanted to describe the steps that I took in order to perform this composition, I might say first, we translated triangle ABC, right three units and up four units, or three units in the direction, X direction, four units in the Y direction. Next, we reflected the image over the X axis. which ended up mapping it to triangle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. So that's one way of describing the sequence of transformations that we performed on this triangle. Just 
like you used function notation in your work last year in your algebra class with functions, we can also use function notation in order to describe the effects of a transformation. If I were to use function notation, I would start by saying this reflection in the x-axis following my translation that moves everybody three units in the x direction, four units in the y direction of triangle ABC results in or maps to the triangle ABC double prime. So what I wrote up here in black ink and what I wrote here in red ink both mean exactly the same thing. They're two different ways of expressing the same idea. You should understand and be able to relate to both the sentences and the function notation that I expressed there in the red ink. So my little ghost triangle there is kind of my first strategy, and I guess strategy would be a good word, my first strategy for dealing with the composition of transformations. And that's what you saw happen in example one. Sometimes, though, we're not given the flexibility to be able to use that strategy, to be able to use that ghost figure. So I do want to give you a different strategy that you can use, and that's what I'm going to show you here in example two. In number two, it says find the image of triangle ABC after a reflection in the x-axis following a reflection in the y-axis. Now, just like I did with the first example, I'm going to go ahead and start by plotting all of these points. So there's point A, point B, and lastly, point C. And this time, I'm going to go ahead and perform both transformations at once. So I'm going to go ahead and recall that this little open circle means the word following, which means I have to begin with reflecting each point across the y-axis. So as I reflect point A across the y-axis, he jumps over here into quadrant one. But then the second thing that I'm going to do is reflect him over the x-axis, which will cause him to end up down here in quadrant four. And I'm going to label him A prime. Then I'm going to do the same thing with point B. I'm going to reflect him across the x-axis, sorry, reflect him across the y-axis first, which moves him into quadrant four, and then secondly, reflect him across or over the x-axis, moving him up into quadrant one. And lastly, point C, I'm going to reflect him over the y-axis, which will move him into quadrant one, then reflect him over the y-axis, which moves him into quadrant two. So what I've done differently here is I've eliminated that need for the go step by doing both pieces all at the same time. And again, to describe this transformation, I can either do so in words by saying first, reflect triangle ABC, and the Y axis. then reflect its image over the x-axis, which ends up mapping it to triangle ABC prime. And again, that would be a really nice way of describing in words or in sentences. If you prefer, you can use the function notation. A reflection in the x-axis following a reflection in the y-axis of triangle ABC results in triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, its image. Now sometimes, by the way the question is asked, you may be forced into doing one way or the other. For instance, if we go over and look at the questions on the following page, we notice that in the first example, they've drawn a picture for us already. They've put that little ghost triangle, the, the prime triangle in there. So they're forcing us to go the way of the first example. In number three, 
however, they're telling you that the image after the composition, so after both of these things have happened, the image is the prime triangle. By naming the first triangle after both of those things have happened, triangle RST prime, they're eliminating the option of using that ghost triangle. They're telling you that both of these things have to happen in the same step. So just by the nature of the way the question is asked, you may be forced into using one of those two strategies. So know that, be aware of it, and be on the lookout for it. As always, thank you for the gift of your time and watching the video. Do take a few minutes to highlight the key ideas and the important takeaways so that you'll have those when it comes time for a quiz or a test. And then see if you can apply what you have learned in order to be able to solve the two questions on the following page.